Red Sox have their new guy, John Farrell, new manager. Bring him in from Toronto. The first time they've had a manager from Toronto since Dick Williams in 1967. Different league, different time. <laughs> I'm Kevin DuPont for Globe 10.0 here with Chad Finn. Chad, uh, right guy? I think he is. Yeah, I really do think he is. I've written this a couple times as this process has gone on. Uh, there's a sense from fans, I think, that maybe they need a fresh start. And that's probably fresh true. start, new guy. Yeah, yeah just getting totally away from the you know the the mess of the last few years. But Farrell wasn't here for this. He was here when Clay Buckles won 17 games. He was here when John Lester was one of the best left-handers in baseball. When Josh Beckett was almost accountable. Uh, <laughs> he left, and a lot yeah. of the things with the pitching staff went wrong after he was gone. He's a bright guy. Had great run in Cleveland as a uh, director of player development. Uh, there's a lot of good to like about him. I know it didn't go great in Toronto, but I, I think he's a very good choice. Well, it didn't go great in Toronto for Cito Gaston either, and they, they, you know they've got their problems. But hard, hard for anyone from Boston to say another organization has problems based on what we've seen here with the 93 losses. Yeah. What what I like about it is I get the sense from talking to people here that this is a guy who I, you know probably uh, wrong word to say feared, but certainly respected. Yeah. You know, a guy a guy has got authority in the room, and let's face it, they needed it from the beer and the chicken thing. Then the, va the Valentine thing. I didn't feel from Valentine at all during the course of the year these guys really respected him. No, not from not from probably day one in Fort Myers, yeah. it seemed like, when you look back on it. The thing with Farrell was you heard that uh, he kept these guys, again, back to that word, accountable. Uh, he kept the lock in the cabinet where Josh Beckett would go get his snacks or whatever. You, you really feel like what <laughs> happened in September 2011 wouldn't have happened if John Farrell was still their pitching coach. Beyond that, he's a very bright, accomplished baseball guy, and you can never have enough of those in your organization. Right. We know they've got to go out. They've got to go out and bring in. They've got to get another starter. They've got to add to this lineup. Decimate, well, frankly, uh, decimated through election by the trade, mm -hmm. sending all those guys to the Dodgers. Where do you think his most profound impact is just from, I'm not going to say X's and O's because that's exaggerated, but just, just from who he is as a baseball guy, where's his most profound effect on what they've got right now? Well, tactically, we really don't know a whole heck of a lot about him. That's probably something they can point out in Toronto a little bit more. But the truth is, it doesn't matter that much anyway unless he's bunting with his uh, cleanup hitter four times a game or something absurd. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He, he's a guy who uh, is, you hope he gets that pitching staff on track. That's number one. Number two, they bring in capable players, and he gets out of the way and lets them play. If that happens, they'll be much better than they were this year. Maybe not a playoff team, but on the right track yeah. again. In other words, nowhere to go but up after 93 <laughs> losses and the worst record in 50 years. John Farrell, it's on you.